The duplication of DNA is known as replication. In eukaryotes, replication begins at specific initiation sites. There are many initiation sites on a eukaryotic chromosome. At each initiation site, replication begins with the separation of parent strands. Synthesis of the new complementary strand begins when the first nucleotide pairs up with its complement at the initiation site. The first nucleotides to pair up with the parent DNA strand are ribonucleotides. Base pairing rules apply. Guanine pairs up with its complementary base, cytosine, at the initiation site. Another ribonucleotide is added to the three prime end of the first ribonucleotide. Hydrogen bonds the base of the ribonucleotide to its complementary base on the DNA strand. The outer two phosphate groups split off and phosphodiester bonds form between the three prime position of the first sugar and the five prime position of the second. The new RNA strand continues to grow at its three prime end. G pairs with C, A pairs with T, C pairs with G. Since ribonucleotides are being added, U pairs with A. The new strand has a base sequence complementary to the parent strand, but consists of RNA. It is referred to as an RNA primer. When the RNA primer is about 30 nucleotides long, a deoxyribonucleotide is added to the three prime end of the RNA primer. The enzyme DNA polymerase adds deoxyribonucleotides to the growing chain. Base pairing rules continue to be followed. C pairs with G, A pairs with T. Since deoxyribonucleotides are added, T pairs with A. The newly synthesized DNA strand is called the daughter strand. The sequence of bases in the daughter strand is complementary to the sequence of bases in the parent strand. So far, we have focused on the replication of only one portion of a parent strand. To show replication of both parent strands, we will demonstrate the process again, beginning with the parent DNA molecule. In this representation, the individual bases are not shown. For simplicity, we will again uncoil the parent DNA molecule. Arrows indicate the five prime to three prime direction of each strand. The two parent strands separate at the initiation site, creating two replication forks. As the region of separated strands widens, the replication forks move farther apart, creating an opening in the two strands called the replication bubble. The replication process starts at the initiation site. RNA primer is synthesized first, going in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Although replication begins at the initiation site on both parent strands, the strands are oriented in opposite directions. Therefore, the nucleotide strands grow in opposite directions. Since these two strands are the first to be synthesized, they are called leading strands. After several ribonucleotides have been added, the enzyme DNA polymerase begins adding deoxyribonucleotides. As the replication fork moves along the DNA molecule, the replication bubble enlarges and the leading strands continue to elongate. Another RNA primer now begins to grow on both parent strands. This primer is also growing in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction in this case, toward the initiation point. After several ribonucleotides are added, DNA polymerase begins adding deoxyribonucleotides. Due to a lag in the replication of this portion of DNA, these strands are referred to as lagging strands. The replication fork continues to move along the DNA molecule. Synthesis of the leading strand results in a continuous strand of DNA with one RNA primer. The RNA primer is eventually replaced with DNA. Synthesis of another segment of the lagging strand begins with the RNA primer. 
Again, DNA nucleotides are added to this primer in the five prime to three prime direction until the first primer on the lagging strand is reached. The first primer is replaced with deoxyribonucleotides and the DNA fragments are joined. Replication will continue until all replication bubbles meet. The leading strands continue to elongate. One DNA molecule has now become two DNA molecules with identical base sequences.